time to bring it on with your email questions. And Gordon, this first one is from a viewer who says, I am with a man who does not believe in the Lord. He asked me to move in with him, and I have a feeling I may marry him one day. I'm okay with him not believing, but it scares me because I know what the Bible says about people who don't believe. What can I do? What should I do? Is there anything I can do? Um, this is kind of an incredible question. Um, <laughs> do you know what the Bible says about fornication? Uh, I, I would look at that first before you start thinking about, you know, should I marry an unbeliever? Uh, if you're going to move in with a man, you're telling the whole world uh, that you're having sex outside of marriage. Uh, that's what's going on here. Uh, and so to say, what is there anything I can do? Don't do that. Um, and there are really good reasons um, for not doing that. You're setting yourself up to be really hurt because if he's not willing to commit to you in marriage, at what point in time will he say, well, it was nice while it lasted, but now we, we need to stop. And at that point in time, are you going to be heartbroken? Are you going to be wondering, what do I do now? Uh, and, and it's for your own protection. Uh, so, so look at how can you protect yourself and guard your heart it is the wellspring of life, and don't give it away casually. Uh, marriage is a commitment, and it's a commitment for life, and it's wonderful when you have that. If you don't have that, then please don't be moving in with him. It just doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even when she says, I'm okay with him not believing, I mean, you know, you really ought to love Jesus so much yourself that it's not okay to be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't. I mean, that's a tough place to be. Could you imagine being married and Catherine not believing? Or Well, one of my, my parents made sure that when I was growing up, don't marry an, an unbeliever. And um, of, of all the things I did in my rebellion. Uh, <laughs> that was the right one, right? <laughs> that's the one, one good thing I did. <laughs> You made a good choice there. But. <laughs> did, did fine, and boy, I, I appreciate it because yeah. I'm not sure uh, when I when I got called and and Jesus showed up for me, I'm not sure an unbeliever would have followed me to Asia and would have um, been with me through all of that. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, this is Peggy who says, three times now I've been stopped at a traffic light where a person holding a homeless sign is asking for money. This is a suburban community, not the city. They stand at busy shopping centers and at lights near the mall. It's very uncomfortable when they're standing right outside my car window. I tithe and give to different ministries, including CBN and my local homeless shelter. I feel guilty for not handing them money, but don't want to get scammed either. I wonder what Jesus would do. Uh, I learned in, in Asia um, that there are these begging gangs uh, and they, they, they all are organized in all the major cities and uh, a sort of local mafia is controlling them and the uh, kids that you see dressed in rags and all dirty begging on the street, uh, the money that you give to them ends up going to this gang. Um, and so it was, it's just heartbreaking. So. Uh, what do we do? What would Jesus do? We were, we were into that same thought process. How do you handle this situation? And uh, some wonderful Christian friends of ours said, well, it's easy. Uh, those kids won't give the gang members food. <laughs> so if you give them food, you're actually helping them right there. They're hungry. They're starving. And if you give them good, nutritious food, uh, and you, you take that around with you in your car so you're able to give it to them, then you know you're helping a very tangible need. You're helping them and you're not funding some kind of illegal activity. So we did that. I would encourage you to do that. Um, there's, there seems to be more of this now in our culture. So uh, yeah. do that. You know, I was just talking also with a friend that I, a coworker who said she stops and talks with them. And you know, mm -hmm. Jesus did do that in the Bible with people that were sort of the unacceptable, sometimes the untouchables. He stopped and found out what was going on in their lives. And sometimes that's a good thing to do too. Well, he would also seek them out. Mm -hmm. uh, he wouldn't just <laughs> wait for them to come to him. Hang out at the water. He, would, he would seek them out. And 
I'm always amazed with the story of the gathering, the demoniac in, in the graveyard. Jesus crossed the Sea of Galilee just for him, just to find him.